Well, a one-nil lead to Sydney Olympic, and the players are out on the park for the second half. A quick one from Johnny Warren. Uh, the conditions obviously playing havoc with both teams. I wonder if either of them is advantaged by all this. Uh, I think probably more South Melbourne. Gosling's injured. I think in wet weather you've got to shoot from any distance. Anything can happen. I think it goes without saying, Les, that the weather's going to play a big part in the outcome of this game. There's going to be a touch of luck, a lot of mistakes in the second half. The team which makes the least will win. All right, Johnny, better let the players get on with it. Here's our commentator, Andy Pascalidis. South Melbourne has lost just one game in their past eight outings. No changes to the 11, which beat Brisbane last week. This is an experienced team with just two of the first 11, having played less than 100 games in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. Sydney Olympic have two new faces today. New Zealand international Clint Gosling is back from suspension and number seven Elias Avietinos returns from injury. Sydney's Barcelona striking duo of Seal and Aaron Basic are together for just the second time this season. And Aaron Basic is in dynamic form. He scored his third goal in just four games so far. Again, South Melbourne has lost just one game in their past eight outings. No changes to the 11, which started last week's game against Brisbane. Again, this is an experienced side with just two of the first 11, having played less than 100 games in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. And one of those players is 22-year-old goalkeeper Dean Anastasiadis, who's making his fifth successive appearance. He's playing so well, he's kept Bruce McLaren in the youth team. Crow gets us underway for the second half here at Olympic Park. South Melbourne, who started so positively, they should have had a couple of goals in the first 10 minutes, but they face the scoreline, which reads Sydney Olympic 1, South Melbourne 0. Olympic with two changes to the team, which beat Sydney CSC, and again, the weather there causing some real concern for David Healy, who is down for the count of this sideline closest to us. And he hasn't moved, as you'll see, they'll have to stop play there, surely. Well, the referee allowing play to continue, Trimboli doing the smart thing, just clearing it away. And the weather, which didn't even show any signs of rain, hitting us here at Olympic Park in the earlier game. Preston defeating Brisbane 5-1, there was really no signs of what was to come here. We'll just have a look here. The ball holding up. Healy committed to the, the clearance. Seal came in and obviously a connection there. And Healy is receiving treatment. The coach, Jim Bergoglios, just checking on his young charge. And good sportsmanship there from Olympic giving the ball straight back to Wade, who's playing sweeper with Levit Jurakovic suspended the second week. Interesting change there. Seal trying to get it on to Aaron Bassic. As you can see, how tough it is for the boys out there. Haslam, who's come on. And oh, lightning starting. And now Milosevic. And well taken by Dean Anastasiadis. In trying conditions here. Peterson clearing it away, but Evgeny Noss is there. We'll see the replay, and it's the Seattle's well positioned. Again, Milosevic. Seal trying to get it on far and Basic. And Gary Hasler. He has come on during the break, and uh, I'll just check quickly to see which player has come off. It could be Talakis, because he copped a bit of a knock. And indeed, it looks like Hasler has come on for Peter Talakis. Hasler can't get in there ahead of Phillips. And the good, the good news really for South Melbourne is that Healy is ready to come back on. Phillips is killing it. And we'll see much more of that today. He's the most experienced player in this Sydney Olympic lineup. There's Anastasiakis. Big clearance. Bernal getting there ahead of Waratifi, and that's been a pretty interesting duel. Very physical one. Natasios has been in great form of late. Phillips intercepts that uh, intended pass. Lucianus. And 
that's really a lottery out there for both teams. Bernal getting in ahead of Hasler. And now right, just straight back to Phillips, and again, possession which will change, no doubt, quite a few times in the second half. Olympica leading by one goal to nil. Aaron Basic scored that one in the 41st minute. And just in case you have tuned in, we're coming to you live from Olympic Park in Melbourne. The second of the double header in round 12 of the Coca-Cola Soccer League. The earlier game, Preston defeating Brisbane United by five goals to one. And in other results played so far, of course, Marconi last night defeating West Adelaide 6-2. Morwell victors at home by 3-1 against Heidelberg. And in the Sydney game, Parramatta defeating Adelaide City 3-1. Now, for South Melbourne, the way it stands at this stage, they have slipped to fourth. So, John, a very important match. Uh, I know all games, really, that we've had on match of the day are critical, particularly for Olympic. If they want to keep up with uh, the pace setters, they're already sitting in ninth position on 14 points. Of course, South Melbourne haven't lost... Uh, well, they've only lost one game in seven. But Musket will come on for Healy. And a, a very important uh, day for both teams. They're really going to come adrift. As the free kick comes, Gosling came out, and luckily for him, he had some numbers back there. So already South Melbourne have made two changes. That second one is Musket, the young soccer route captain. He'll slot into right back, and the way it will stay at sweeper. And right, you've got to commend him for the work there. Now, oh, Warren Tifi, and just the control, letting him down. Soros clears the ball away. Well, both of these teams have got pretty full cool squads in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. South Melbourne have got the likes of Jurakovic, Postacoglu, Harry Mikael and McLaren on the sidelines today. And the same thing for Olympic, no Cardozo, Cardoni, Catholos or Meyer. Clint Gosling took a pretty bad knock to the left hand in that first half. A real test for him, and there's the goal from the Waratifi. The equaliser for South Melbourne has come six minutes into the second half. But Johnny on the spot does it again. A Waratifi sixth goal of the season. He's 47th goal in the Coca-Cola Soccer League, and this is his 107th appearance. That's a superb strike rate by anyone's standards. That nudge had come on. The desperate clearance on the line. The Peterson corner. The nudges come on from right, and a Waratifi there again. One one is the score. One and wonders, Andy, how much this hand injury to Gosling has played its part there. That's not a very confident palm from him at all. And the problem for Olympic is uh, if they're to replace him, they've got to put a field player in goal. So I sense there wasn't the Clint Gosling that we know going for that ball. Perhaps played its part, but apart from the slack marking uh, of right at the first post, able to get the free header in to flick it back. But we're not going to see pretty football in the second half. It's going to be very much uh, direct. So don't muck around at the back. Get it down the other end as uh, quickly as possible. Anyone who attempts to play in these conditions are going to have the passes cut out with the waterlogged field. And you tend to look, uh, Andy, at players who've had experience in Europe or in New Zealand for that matter and in England, uh, who have had a lot of experience playing on wet fields, and of course Australian boys haven't. Uh, mainly because as young boys, uh, as soon as it rains, uh, they tend to pull our games off. So you'd look really the types uh, like Ironsides or uh, Aaron Bassix, who, who's had a lot of experience in Europe, uh, Waratifi, those types of players who have played overseas sh should have a bigger influence in the second half than the others. Now Trimboli. Reading it on for a Waratifi, that constant shadow of the Socceroo. Andrew Bernal is on his back. Milosevic playing it away. Peterson was committed, but falls favourably for Phillips, and his ball intended for Seal. Well, wide of the uh, striker, David Seal. And in no 
most instances, I would think that maybe games like this would be considered to uh, be postponed. The play continues. Eight minutes of the second half. South Melbourne one, Sydney Olympic one. Tassios gets there first. On the outer in round five and six. Stamped his authority in this midfield of South Melbourne in recent weeks. It's going to take us away. Musket. There's Spirit Dacos, but now George Soros. He can't find Aaron Basic. Half was blocked by Musket. And the return pass, that will stay in. Nice control, good turn. And now Trimboli. The ball inside, a Warren TV. Gosling got up there and he got the right touch. And that could have been a second one for Francis Awaratifi. Danny Wright. Waratifi again looks up for Wright. He had to go for it first time. Danny Wright, a real veteran of the Coca-Cola Soccer League. He's only 28, but he's played just on about 246 games. There'll be a change for Sydney Olympic. Elias Avierinos, the number seven, will be coming off. Grant Lee comes on, Avierinos goes off, Avierinos who was injured last week, maybe feeling the effects of that injury. And they certainly got experience in Grant Lee. And very versatile too, Andy. Looks like he'll play, well he obviously will play in Avierinos' position on the left side of the field. We've seen him operate mainly down the right side, either uh, as a forward or in midfield for Olympic. One wonders Trimboli playing wide, whether they've uh, put Lee on because he's probably a little bit more mobile than Averinos as well. But he'll be able to control Trimboli a lot better. Trimboli, a key player for South Melbourne. Very creative, despite these conditions, still able to set up chances for South Melbourne. Peterson looking for Waratifi. Gosling's there again. It's a good clearance. Kept his cool at the back. Giannis on the iron side. Ball just hobbles up. Musket away from uh, Gary Phillips. This is their 29th meeting in the Coca-Cola Soccer League. South Melbourne have an outstanding record against Sydney Olympic. They've won 14 games. And eight games have ended in draws. Saying that, Olympic have won five of their last eight games against South Melbourne. It's 1-1 at the moment. Hasler, the line's going to signal the foul by Gary Hasler. And the line's been on that far side. Green Day, and it's signaled for the foul. Enforcement in that goal area for Olympic. It's it's a virtual lottery if that ball just falls loose for anyone. Well, it's almost as if the coaches should say, forget playing football, Andy, just get it into the other box as quickly as possible and play it from there. In this conditions, anything is possible. Here comes the Phillips free kick. There was Wade. He was kicking close caps on Milosevic. Stephen Tassios. Still with that great run. This is a lovely bit of work from Tassios. Now Hasler. The Socceroo. Plays a beautiful ball to Butzianis. In it comes! And Trimboli just couldn't get on the end of it. South Melbourne has started the second half exactly the way they started the first. But this time they have the goal to show for it. The Waratifi's equaliser. Conditions really are uh, more suited to water polo. Or... You've got to commend both teams. They uh, really try to play as open as humanly possible. Peterson. Just a little cheeky dab on for a 
Tiki Pernell is there. It's been a pretty interesting duel today, a Tiki and Bernal. Second half continues. Soros in there now, Bernal. Musket. Trimbali. Such great control. I thought he copped a bit of a nudge in the back there. And yeah, that's what Trimbali's uh, asking about. and officials out there. And notice our cameraman have really worked hard as well. Not the uh, best way to film a game, but uh, it's just amazing, John. This is, I think, the tenth game out of 12 match of the day where inclement weather has really robbed us of uh, something much better in terms of conditions for the players to play some open football. We've seen some great match of the days in saying that too, but... It's been wet, Andy, but it hasn't affected the game as much as uh, this has. Uh, Olympic Park generally drives uh, or absorbs the weather quite well, but it uh, has been quite torrential. And uh, the game uh, drifting South Melbourne's way, they've adapted a little bit better to the conditions in Olympic at this stage of the second half. And South Melbourne are trained here on Thursday in Perth. Perfect weather as Gosling comes out to deny Butzianis. They trained here, it was nice and dry, the pitch was perfect, they were absolutely ecstatic about it. And, uh, there's not that much to really be enthused about at this stage. Although they've shown some fighting qualities to come back into this game. One won the score. Trimboli looking for a Waratifi. Butzianis was there on the left, away by Spiridakos. Straight to right. Now Waratifi again. Maybe the header would have been the best thing there. He was trying to uh, get some control and line up the shot. But you'd have to put that down to another good chance really for South Melbourne. It was, and the marking not good from Olympic at the back. You can't allow Waratifi that type of space. He will uh, regret not uh, finishing better. He should have, he knows it. But the space given to him really is something that... Uh, Olympic can be right out of this game with slack marking like that. Well, puts the Arnis corner away by Soros. Many right lines are up and Wade's offside. It won't, uh, it won't stand at all. Some of the fans are up off their seats. The flag went up straight away. the number six that's uh interesting to see that paul wade who uh, is playing sweeper today for the suspended jurakovic there he is again to cover for his team it's a role which should suit him uh, i'm sure the amount of work that he does in midfield normally and he'll be a very fresh boy tonight playing at the back he's got the experience australian captain the experience the ability to communicate uh, the knowledge to know when to come forward as we just saw him in the goal scoring situation it's a role which uh, he has and should adopt to very very easily Milosevic away by Hasler the word Tiki looks up but Giannis was thinking about it he's gone to the right for Trimboli that's not a bad ball at all Soros and Trimboli and Soros there again he's having a pretty good game he's had the job of uh, picking up on Trimboli Trimboli kept it in, but uh, went straight to Phillips. And Milosevic now, Aaron Basic. Again, the ball holding up. Lions. The long one for Aaron Basic. And that just triples over that sideline. The new by 
for this season and Mr. Seattis. It's clearance. Not a bad one at all. Or Trying to nudge it on for Butianis. Played by Barrett. Tassos again looks for Waratifi. He's headed it down, but uh, straight to Spiridakos. Inside there. now for Butsianis. Hasler's come over to help him. Still Butsianis. The ball was out though on that far side. So just a reminder that right through this festive period, match of the day will continue. On Sunday nights and of course the replay on the Monday afternoon. The only change is that uh, on the ball is recess. Now Trimboli, and there it is, it'll trickle over. Paul Trimboli does it once again. You give him one ounce of room and he will punish you. Trimboli's 53rd goal in the league, and this is 166th appearance, and that also is a tremendous strike rate. just made it over the line but it has been South Melbourne's second half and one feels that this goal could well put it beyond the Olympic they just haven't uh, had it together at all in the second half and South Melbourne deservedly ahead 2-1 there's a nice view of it from here Trevally great control and slotting it past Nick Gosling 2-1 the score South Melbourne They're looking good Closest to us, that it was a throw in. We're looking at that replay of seals that uh, the ball was not on this side. Lee. Can't get him inside from Milosevic. Waratifi scored the equaliser for his team. 51st minute. Side on for Aaron Bassett. He's trying to get it through for Seal. Like there again, just sliding it across to Hasler. Puts Giannis to get the break. He did, he got there ahead of Dacos, but couldn't get it around him. And now Barrett, this Olympic defence has been under intense pressure in this second half. Hasler aiming for a Waratiki, but now found Lee. Musket and Aaron Basic and the referee pulling up play against Latko and Basic. Two of the young Socceroos uh, benching today. Musket coming on, of course, in the second half, and Peter Tsakenis on the bench for Sydney Olympic. They'd be uh, pretty weary men after the four match series against Brazil. As Musket gets up there. The Tiger in Lee. Can't win this time. Musket. Intelligent play. Trimboli. Musket and Bernal. Uh, Musket uh, committed the infringement on Andrew Bernal. The linesman signaled straight away. Jerry Connolly, the senior linesman here. Uh, Kevin Musket might have had a few words to say there, but while that's going on, there is uh, some concern there for Andrew Bernal. A big year ahead uh, for Kevin, of course, uh, Andy with the World Youth Championship. Just feel, let's see, have a look at this again. There's just a slight touch there. And another one. But I think that's a fault in Kevin's play. Look, at 17 years of age, he was one of the outstanding performers uh, in the World Youth Championship in 
Portugal. He's the captain now for the next one. He has a huge responsibility. He's a tremendous player, the most experienced. I just feel he's giving away unnecessary fouls like that one now that the import of all that is that come World Youth Championship and you start picking up a yellow, then you get another one virtually for nothing, that uh, you're going to miss the important games. And I think that's an aspect that Kevin's just got to knock out of his game and then can achieve uh, his real potential, which is one of our outstanding young talents. Certainly a big role uh, for the World Youth Championship. His composure and his experience at the back is invaluable to the Australian team. Soros got in there again, but his clearance went straight to Danny Wright. Spiridakos, good angled header because Trimboli and Peterson were ahead of him. But the fight for first team places in these two, two sides is very intense. I mentioned earlier that you've got players like Jurakovic, Costa Koblu, Mikhail McLaren, and of course Catholis, Cardozo. It's one reason many many rates South Melbourne as uh, the one for the title not just uh, the 11 they put on the field but they have the depth which few other clubs have without that depth uh, in a long season you, uh, the injuries come in the suspensions you're not going to make it well, most coaches you speak to uh, Andy will say South Melbourne's the team to beat for them well, South Melbourne has certainly shown a dramatic recovery particularly in the second half and Gosling with that back pass rule getting it away South Melbourne had only won one of their first four games. Sealed. Olympics problem, Andy, not just in the second half, but in the first half as well, is that the likes of Seal and Aaron Bassett in front really haven't had the service. Potentially their, it's their first game together, one must add, but potentially Seal and Aaron Bassett best uh, striking duos in the country but there has been no link between them and the rest of their teammates this evening you can give credit for that to the alert to the south melbourne midfield which also must be critical that sydney olympics midfield really haven't been able to stamp any sort of authority and certainly not been able to provide the opportunities for seal and arabasic in front peterson wins the free kick Referee wants it back, about three metres. There's just on uh, 20 minutes of normal time left. South Melbourne are up by two goals to one. Peterson. And a miscued pass, although Waratifi comes across. Musket. And he's done well to get the ball in. And there was Bernal. Now Peterson lines it up. Stopped by Trimboli. And a great save by Gosling. Sydney Olympic thought there was an offside on there. And the linesman didn't put his flag up. And there was the chance to make it three. Yeah, well, I don't think it was offside, Andy. But the defenders do that quite often when they're caught out. And they are caught out here. They've got three uh, South Melbourne players free, including Trimboli. Defenders appeal for the offside. It certainly wasn't offside, and Olympic lucky to get out of that. Good save from Gosling. It's been a big week for both clubs off the field. The Olympic opened up their sporting club at Horsham Park in Sydney, and South Melbourne have received a grant from the government to do the same. Now, Tassios. Uh, Waratifi picked his spot, and just not enough power really to threaten Gosling. But South Melbourne. Well and truly on top. And uh, Waratifi playing a big role in that. He's uh, here, there and everywhere, reveling in the conditions. This header, uh, a fair distance out. You can see his reaction to it. He probably should have done better with it. Hitting it downwards. Once you head the ball downwards, it's much more difficult for the keeper, particularly in these conditions. Hitting it in the air as he did made it quite, quite a simple task for Gosling to save. Iron side. You haven't seen it's through that midfield. Wade comes across with the lightning. Had everything here, but a change to be made. Robert Ironside. So it hasn't really been the same Ironside we've come to expect. Ironside will go off. He copped a bit of a knock last week. He needed stitches to a wound to his forehead. He had those taken out. Now Ironside comes off 
the young soccer repeated to Kittis comes on. So both teams have brought on their substitutes. Peter Tsikinis uh, still a little bit down in the dumps, Andy saw him before the game, still about that penalty uh, the other night, hit the post and just saying to him, well, uh, the really great players of, of world football have all missed them on big occasions. Remember the 86 uh, World Cup where the likes of Zico and Platini missing. And hit the post, uh, there's very, very little in it, but uh, he's such a good player, such a good talent. We'll put it all down to experience. To play here because, uh, as we were just mentioning earlier, Olympic really outplayed in midfield. It's up to the likes of Tukemis to to put it right now if Olympic get to get back in the game. But I think it's fair to say that it has been South Melbourne's second half. They've adapted to the conditions a lot better, taken the game to Olympic and had Olympic on the back foot for this uh, almost 30 minutes of the second half. Yes, it's just about 30 minutes up on uh, on my watch here. 2-1. South Melbourne. And the victory here will keep them uh, in third place at the moment with Parramatta's victory earlier today. There are 23 points, three clear of South Melbourne. They're level with West Adelaide on 23 and of course Marconi uh, leaders on 24. out as Milosevic tried to his very best to keep it in. It's a Kennis. That came off Paul Trimboli. George Soros back in favour in this Olympic setup. He's played the last two games. It's Tassos got in there ahead of Tsakenis. And again another stoppage. straight to Phillips and he's given it back to Peterson. Tassios. Waratiki's offside. The Olympic defence moved out quickly. And up there again Danny Wright. Phillips has seen a lot of the ball in the second half. Gutsianis moments ago threatened that Olympic goal as he chased the through ball. Bernal has brought down a warranty for the referee, allows play to continue. Hasler inside looking for Trimboli. And again the opportunity for Paul Trimboli. A much tougher one this time around though. Just got away from him a little bit Andy. What a good ball from Hasler. just been told, as we watch that replay, Sydney CSC have defeated Wollongong by one goal to nil. So Sydney CSC move up to 22 points. They go above Wollongong City and South Melbourne. Of course, that depends on how it uh, develops here. Of course, South Melbourne leading 2-1 and looked well in control as Wade goes long again for Butianis. It's played by Barrett. Again, straight to Spirit Dacos. Blair with plenty of time. Phillips straight back to Blair. And again, Butzianis. Will he keep it in? No. It didn't hold up in the wet. I thought he had the right idea, knocking it as far forward as he could. But Con Butzianis been very effective second half Andy it's the other aspect of South Melbourne's game they've used the flanks a lot better the, the theory is the, that there's less uh, less water on the flanks if there's such a thing in these conditions but relatively less 
the middle tends to get bogged down and Olympic uh, South Melbourne I should say have exploited both the left flank through uh, Bucianis and this right flank much better than Sydney Olympic have done. Well, Sydney Olympic are really against it now time is running against them about 33 and a half minutes in the second half Cyrus was hoping for Milosevic cut out by Musket and a miscue by George Soros and you remember him uh, very well Andy the last time I saw George play was before 127,000 fans at uh, the Stadio de Luz when Australia lost 1-0 in the World Youth Championship to Portugal he played up front then and uh, he's, a, he's a case of another forward uh, making it as a defender I think once you've played in front it's relatively easier to drop back you have the uh, the discipline concentration and does Peterson have the concentration he does 3-1 South Melbourne what a resurgence in the second half they've created the chances they've done all the running and that really is the ball game deservedly so Andy the marking of Olympic at the back has been quite atrocious you saw there Peterson running in from deep, getting free. There's just no one around at all. Clint Gosling must be wondering what sort of defence he's got in front of him. And Peterson, almost free, just whacks it away. And there have been many things wrong with Olympics game tonight. One of them certainly has been the concentration and marking at the back. Well, for Peterson, he doesn't score that many goals, but that one's a sweet one for him. That's his 18th. And today he's playing his 196th game. So much experience in the South Melbourne team. Now Milosevic, the off-season signing. Right's up there, Aaron Bassett with the overhead. Screwing it wide and that'll go out for a goal kick. I think that's the first time we've seen Zlatko touch the ball in the second half. Stand to be corrected on that, but it does illustrate the point that Aaron Bassett and Seal in front really have had no supply at all and irrespective of the quality of the players you play in front and Aaron Bassick and CLR quality if you don't get the service you, you may as well come and sit with us but uh, dryer up here <laughs> well surprisingly normally uh, thankfully we're not at Middle Park Andy we're, uh, we've sat in the rain uh, many many occasions at least it's dry here tonight but should uh, South Melbourne finish the game uh, with this scoreline they'll move into second place on goal difference just a point behind Marconi West Adelaide also on 23 points would drop to third on goal difference Sydney CSC on 22 I'm giving that five a, a, quite a break Has, that was smart play by Convertianis the dummy and ooh jeez and has the <laughs> you'll need a bit more than that to uh, keep him sideline the referee will play the free kick on that far side and Gary Hasler was really pumped up before the game. He's so desperate to get back into the first 11 here. And it's a free kick on that far side. Hasler and Barrett will play the push. And uh, South Melbourne have been singing in the rain here. They're up by three goals to one. The earlier game in this double header saw Preston defeat Brisbane by five goals to one. Don't forget you can see extended highlights of that game tomorrow in the replay. That's 4.30, that's half an hour earlier in Adelaide, of course. Gosling away, so Kenneth was up. The numbers are there again for South Melbourne. Milosevic, he won't get across to that one. Tough day for the uh, ball players out there in both teams. Not much uh, opportunities to display there. The quality is the flags up for offside. It must have been against the Waratifi. I don't think it was Trimboli. Looks like it was against Trimboli. like is it a free kick no it's a throwing for Olympic it must have taken a touch I thought he was pulling up uh, for what appeared to be a foul on Aaron Bassic a man who broke the deadlock in the 41st minute Milosevic Soros 
Again, miscuing. As Trimboli chased him down. Phillips has got it across. He was looking for Lee. And Hasler again. Luciano's is onside. Luciano's, he should go for goal. There's no other option at the moment for him. There he is. Con Butzianis, will it be six? Rostin got down there. He's already scored five goals this season. He used to be called the super sub. That's long gone out of the window. But the chances keep coming for South Melbourne. again next week that game between Sydney Olympic and Princeton has been switched to a Sunday that's on at St George Stadium and Olympic uh, will have their hands full Andy on what we saw from Preston earlier tonight uh, really giving a hiding to Brisbane 5-1 and doing it with great style Oscar Crino starting to get results consistently for Preston moving them uh, almost off the bottom of the table. Had they not had that four-point suspension, they'd be well off the bottom, but on six points now, just a point behind Brisbane. And just quickly on those round 13 fixtures, Brisbane are at home to Newcastle on the Saturday, and Sunday Adelaide play Marconi. Heidelberg are at home on Monday to Parramatta, Melbourne CC also at home to Morwell. Olympic play Preston on the Sunday, and South Melbourne travel away to Wollongong, Monday in West Adelaide entertain Sydney CSC. So those top teams have really consolidated their positions. Although West Adelaide, who are leading the uh, the league, lost the way to uh, Marconi. Paul Wade enjoyed himself tonight. Andy at the back. I think it's like a picnic for him playing there after the being in the engine room in midfield where you're up and down all day. Just at the back, uh, used his experience, distribution first class. I think he'd be ready, uh, knowing the amount he puts into every game, I think uh, after tonight he'd be ready to play again. And quite a party for him at the back. Well, there's some real headaches there now, isn't there, for Jim Pergolios in terms of team selection? Well, uh, Djurakovic coming back. And Djurakovic, such a, a great sweeper. Obviously, come back into the sweeping role and wade back to his normal midfield position. That would be a normal change for him. And less than five minutes left here, John. It's 3-1 to South Melbourne. They were down by a goal at half-time, and in all fairness, really, they should have had a couple in that first half. And as Trimboli finds Gary Hasler. Squeezing it off to Butziana. The flag's up there. I well, from here, go, it, uh, yeah. from here, it certainly didn't uh, appear as though he was offside. And so Butzianis gets a yellow too. For kicking the ball away, but I think we make the point that the linesman is in a much better position. He's level with the play from this angle. He certainly appeared on. He's been more prominent in the second half, and one of the reasons for that is that Hasler, uh, who also... Uh, Coming in there uh, on the second half has been able to give him such a good supply of the ball and give it to him early. Well, 23 goals have been scored in the, the, the results that we uh, have been given so far and throw in four here today and goal scoring has really picked up the last two rounds and we have a situation where the trend in goal scoring has picked up uh, we are up 5% on last season's figures, and that will continue to climb, I think, after this round 12 of the Coca-Cola Soccer League. Let's get Aaron Basic. Aaron Basic wins out. It's a Kenis. And now Phillips. Playing it long, away by Blair. And Butzianis. Again on this left side. It's really caused them some headaches. The ball inside, just too much on it for a Waratifi. There would be some tired legs there for a Waratifi. He's a lot of running today. A tremendous second half. Butzianis, a Waratifi in particular for South Melbourne. But few can argue with the final scoreline. It's been South Melbourne's game almost uh, since the injury to Gosling just before half-time. 
have dominated the second half. They've adapted to the conditions and just given really another sign uh, as if uh, it was needed and either they are going to be one of the teams to beat in this uh, season's championship. We've seen City Olympic uh, on a couple of occasions this year. They've certainly got the uh, experience and, and talent in that squad, but it's just not clicking for them. Well, the problem is this is the first game that they've, they've played to what uh, Peter Escopolis, their coach, would consider his best lineup. And the teamwork uh, hasn't been there. A warning for Esco as we speak of him. But teams need time. You just don't uh, build them overnight. And the fact that this is their first outing with his best 11, it's going to be some time yet before we see the best of Olympia. And then comes that free kick. It's a real lottery there. Spirit Dacos went for it. Now Milosevic. And again the opportunity, but this time at the other end for Sydney Olympic to salvage something out of this game. There's just on a minute of normal time left. You see there, Screw Dacos went for it. And Milosevic in the number eight. And you've got to commend Paul Wade for his commitment in defence. And the Stasiadis. It's his defence organised. 30 seconds of normal time left. In it comes. Latifi, Rantley chasing, Put inside Hasler, plenty of numbers covering. So South Melbourne on their way to their seventh win in this Coca-Cola Soccer League. Lee, the number 12 who came on in this second half. Phillips now, Bernal idea just direction was off and Spirit Dacos who's been down for about a minute back on his feet he spent a season at uh, Pericos in Greece and he couldn't speak more highly of Lucas Nadulu he sees him as the best talent in Greece not just from the Aussies abroad but of all players there all right so we're playing stoppages at the moment and there it is that's in fact the final whistle for this game south melbourne coming back in the second half they trailed by one goal to nil they certainly deserve the three points here today homework for sydney olympic they've got a lot of work to do and with more winning they're just one point behind olympic south melbourne moved to 23 points they join with West Adelaide and Parramatta with Marconi leading the competition by 24 points now. So Marconi on 24 points. That's uh, so tight at the top. 12 rounds of the Coca-Cola Soccer League as the South Melbourne team go across to uh, salute their faithful supporters here at Olympic Park. The second of the double header in round 12 of the Coca-Cola Soccer League. You see Gary Hasler gets them worked up on that far side disappointment on the faces of all these Sydney Olympic players but a great day for them really South Melbourne who started the season slowly have certainly found their mark in recent weeks they've got a tough one away from home next week at Brandon Park against Wollongong City Dean and Anastasiadis couldn't really fault him for that goal his defence left him open but a great revival in the second half from South Melbourne. 